That is right. Happy Thursday to everybody. Uh, some rain on the schedule for the weekend, so that should make Alex happy. That's going to put a smile on your face, Alex Dunlap, when we get some rain this weekend and the, your lake levels are back to normal. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but, but, I mean, what they're, what they're saying is, uh, first of all, good to see everybody here on the, on the Old Fashioned Show. Man, we got a big one here today. We're going to talk about... Um, Bill Norton, the uh, I, I did some film work on him. We're going to talk about what he could bring to the Texas defense. Of course, visiting for the what could be a rainy spring game this week. Also, some uh, Adonai Mitchell talk that I wanted to get in with mm. uh, with Anwar. I'm not sure if you've okay. gotten into not gotten into this at all with the Bob yeah. McGinn reporting on the Go Long TD site. Um, some of that stuff. We have NFL draft stuff. We have a new defensive tackle portal. Uh, target that Texas is looking at. So, man, a whole lot to get to. But, dude, and yeah. potentially by herself, potentially by herself, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, some, some, some of these things will be by herself. And, yeah, man. So, there is, um, there is rain in the forecast, but it, it's like on what it's saying, even if we get this widespread one to three inches with possible localized flooding in certain areas, it's like, what we need for Lake Travis to fill back up is we need the city of Lano to just flood. <laughs> like, so sorry to you guys in Lano, man, but we need a biblical flood up there. One that might take down the bridge, like back in 2018, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, for sure. Um, we'll see what happens with the spring game. I, I mean, I don't know. Like this, the, the, the statesman had a report on it. Um, the statesman had the report yesterday asking Bianco if this has ever happened. Bianco's like, dude, during my 30 years here, one's never been canceled. I actually have a buy or sell question for you uh, as it regards to rain. So I'm sure we'll get to that. At some statesman point. actually wrote an article about the the potential of rain. In the yeah, man, they're keeping. Well, I mean, that's the kind of, that's the kind of news people can use. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are, are, are they not on strike anymore? They only went on strike for four days, Alex. Okay. It was, it's the most inter it's the most interesting strike ever because usually a strike is designed to cripple the company. So you actually have to cave to their demands. And they went on strike. They're like, we don't like how we're being treated, but we'll be back in four days. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not quite sure that they're going to feel the message. I'm not quite sure they're going to feel the message. So The statesman is like, hey, man, roll in those AI bots, dude. We'll see how they do for a few days in place of these journos, see if we even need to pay these dudes anymore. I, my only concern was, Alice, I was like, you guys maybe gave them the blueprint to function without you. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't think you should have done that. I'm just, that's just me. That's just me. Yeah. Um, so what do you want to do to get started? I, I, I guess we get some by ourselves. Have you watched have you watched uh, Bill Norton at all from, from uh, I've, 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 I've only heard as one as they've called it in the chat, the uh, uh, Alex's anti Norton Norton takes. Well, so look, if, if, if you were to watch the Oklahoma game on, on on its own, which was all I had seen yesterday before I kind of talked a little bit about him, you're going to have anti Norton takes, too. It's just you can watch him in that game. You can just go watch it. You don't even need the, the all 22s. You can go to YouTube and just watch the Alamo Bowl and look at number 45. And you can see in that game, that was a terrible game uh, for that guy. Um, as I what I what I decided to do was I watched the Alamo Bowl game and I watched the um, I watched the uh, the Washington game. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell you what I what what I found there. Uh, we have we, we have Sandman asking if Kirk Bowles went on strike. I did see that Kirk Bowles did yeah. go on strike, but he did say I don't think he was going on on strike. He he basically was saying like, "Hey man, like I'm getting paid okay." <laughs> he, he said something like, uh, "For for for my first time in my career, I'm going to be going on strike from the American Statesman in solidarity." with some of my younger uh, colleagues who are looking for a suitable living wage or something like that. He didn't say that he was looking for a suitable living wage. I think he's he was out there. He was on the pic. He, he was holding a sign. I saw a picture. Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. He was out there, you know, picketing. Yeah. And then uh, they showed back up a couple of days later, but yeah, he was, yeah. It, just took, it just took a long weekend. That's all it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. So, 
a couple things about Bill Norton here. And so, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's looking pretty strong for Texas that they're going to land the guy. And so we're going to go through here. Um, on war, you can just kind of tell me what you, what you think as I go through this stuff. We'll, we'll get to some buyers, so we'll answer any super chat questions that you guys have for sure. If you're in here, uh, thanks so much for being in the specs chat. Thanks so much for being here. If you have anything you want to, us to get to immediately in the chat, just fire up a super chat. We'll get to it. We'll keep an eye on chats though and make sure that we answer any questions that you guys have uh, as it pertains to this or anything else. Um, so Norton, pure pure nose tackle. Uh, through both of these games. Like I said, I just did those two games because they were the two games that I did for Tia Oali'i Savea. Whenever mm, that was good. That was good, <laughs> you, Alex. You, you, you like that? That <laughs> was, was really good. impressive. Um, was very impressive. The uh, Whenever Texas had interest in him, I went through and I did those two games for him because I'm like, well, these are two games. These are two teams that Texas played this year right washington oklahoma right so showing a level of competition sort of similar to what texas might play in a season and so i figured man why not watch norton and chart his game and chart his productivity in those two games in the same two so we can at least have an apples to apples comparison at least versus savea right we've sort of right. seen what tia savea looks like through the course of his time here at texas and my initial thoughts about savea were Dude, he looks like he's probably going to be a guy that's probably four times more productive than Trill Carter was, mm -hmm. right? Um, based on the, the the initial work I did on Trill Carter, I came on these shows last year and I told you guys that Trill one wasn't going to be productive at Texas. He he wasn't going to be any good. People didn't want to hear it. Um, it turned out that that was definitely the case. I think Savay is going to be better, but we have seen through this spring camp he hasn't busted onto the scene with the first team. Right, he hasn't made major waves. He's looking like he's going to be wow. a really solid. Um, I, I do you think Savea? So just to set the table here, whenever you look at Savea, you've seen him. He's number ninety-eight out there. He's generally the mm -hmm. second-team defensive tackle. What have you seen out of him? Have you seen anything to make you think that he's going to be like one of the centerpieces of the interior defensive line this season? No, but I, I saw maybe a you know uh, rotational guy, situational guy. Um, it's just, it's just, again, when you see certain bodies that are out there, you see them, you know, as people movers and then when you see him, um, you just see a person like, okay, I can see you, you know, playing, I can see you in a rotation to your point. I see you in a true Carter role, but I, you know, I don't necessarily see you as that person that, um, I've seen competing for like a starting position, like nothing to that effect. So the, we'll get to what it, what it is with Norton here and why he might have an easier line to possibly starting than Savea, although it feels like coming in, he's not going to be the guy that moves the needle from a pure production standpoint the same way. And whenever I talk about production from these guys, especially these big nose tackles, these space eaters, it's not, I, I understand that these guys need to take on double teams and especially at Arizona, you know, he, he needed to take on double teams at the line of scrimmage to be able to let Jacob Manu, who's going to be playing the, that mic role that Nansen's bringing in here, having Anthony Hill play that I'm so excited to see, right? Mm -hmm. he, you know, there were times where you could say like, yeah, dude, he's a big dude in the middle. He, he frees up Jacob Manu to do the Jacob Manu things that are dialed up within Nansen's system, right? And, and, and I can see Nansen putting a, putting a premium on that. But – there were times versus Oklahoma, like I said, again, uh, just a miserable game, miserable, where he 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 wasn't holding up against double teams. At times, he wasn't even holding up against single teams. Right? Um, is this the, is 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 this the Oklahoma game? No, this is no, this is just off his if, off of his uh, Twitter things about a minute long. Okay, so what we have here is we have a pure nose tackle. Uh, in the two games that I watched, he played eighty eight percent of his snaps head up on the center or at the one technique. He played 4% of snaps, head up on the guard, so with the two technique, and he played 8% of snaps. And this is 89 total snaps, so not a huge sample. But, I mean, we're starting to get to that 100-snap threshold that I like, I like to look at that we consider a decent-sized sample. Um, he played 8% of snaps at the three technique, which is, of course, on the guard's outside eye. One thing that we can say about Norton is that he was a true frontline starter for a very good Arizona defense in 2023. Um, he played 68.46% of snaps in the games that I charted. And just to put that in context, that's a 15% greater snap share than 
the guy that Texas deployed most in their interior defensive line in 2023, which was T- Tavondre Sweat, uh, he played 55.33% of snaps. So, um, you know, you're looking at 68, almost 69% of snaps versus basically 55% of snaps. So Norton was out there a bunch, right? He was one of the main guys who they depended on. Um, he does not um, – necessarily look like he has all the gas in the tank through all those snaps. He can afford to play a lot less snaps. He takes himself off the field um, frequently, and the coaches take him off the field frequently, especially in third down situations and long down and distance situations, certainly in four minute kind of offense situations, right? Whenever like Jackson Arnold gets it going with the real quick passing to the outside, quick Mm -hmm. huddle, all this stuff like that. Um, You know, it's, um, it's, it's just, it just isn't his game. He's got a little bit of an on-off motor, and um, he's a really big dude, tall guy. Uh, I don't know his exact weight. I, th- I think he's close to three hundred thirty pounds. Uh, gets gets gassed pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, does not have the upfield penetration and the same effect on the passing game that Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat had last year. No one does, but he has nothing close to it. Again, he gets taken off the field in passing situations. I will say that versus Washington. Um, he did have his one sack of the season, which was nice to see. And that was a sack versus the Joe Moore award winning offensive line last year. Now he was going up against a very undersized center and Parker Brailsford, who we covered in depth coming into that Washington game. Is he actually good? Right. Can he be good weighing 284 pounds, whatever it was that he, he was, it turned out he actually played pretty well at the uh, redshirt freshman center from Washington, but whenever there's a size disparity like that, I can maybe see why he had a little bit better game versus him. But I mean, Michael Penix only got put on what was it on war? He got sacked six times last season or something, something just crazy. The was, stats that they use crazy. I don't know. I don't I remember forgot what it was, but it was something wild, right? Well, Norton had one of those sacks, right? So I mean, we can kind of we can kind of say that. Um, if you um. If you were to watch the game versus OU on its own, you would say that there is no way that he's a take at all. Um, just watch it for yourself. Watch number 45. And he's the same jersey number as Vernon Broughton. And what you'll see is that, um, it, you know, he he doesn't move well laterally. He can't take on double teams. He goes to the ground way, way, way too often. Uh, he, he's vulnerable versus, versus cut blocks just because of the, because of his height, he gets a little bit unwieldy at times. And, um, there are just some, some issues with that. We'll, we'll talk about the missed tackles here, here in a minute, but the Washington game shows a lot of his most positive attributes. And again, a lot of this was going against Parker Brailsford, right? Who's who's small, but in that game, you see him, he eats up a lot of space in the middle, um, much better against holding up against double teams like we talked about, allowing Manu to do Jacob Manu things. Um, he had the sack. He also, in that game, he drew a holding penalty uh, when Brailsford was trying to take him on in a man solo assignment. I mentioned that because in the Oklahoma game, Oklahoma had a hard time dealing with that Arizona defensive front. They actually – that defensive front caused, caused seven – caused them to commit seven holding penalties. Um you know, none of those had anything to do with with 45. They had nothing to do with Norton. Um, they had six turnovers in that game. They forced six turnovers the Arizona defense did. He didn't produce any of that stuff. Uh, very little production. Um, total failure to move laterally whenever he's engaged. Uh, like we talked about, you know, getting off blocks. Um, he was just – he was a he was a, he, he was a, he's a complete zero in that game, right? The three missed tackles through two games, it, he missed them all in the same way. It was this deal wherever he would, it was always B gap, and he would he would he would be engaged. And what you would just wonder is you're like, dude, why he's so big and strong? Why can he not just press his man off, get into fit up his responsibility, get into the hole and make a run stuff? I was dying to see this guy make some run stuffs, right? But what he was doing is he was just getting his shoulder and his play side arm into the gap. And these these running backs were just breaking arm tackles against him. You know, they were just they were getting by him, uh, breaking arm tackles. We saw two of them with Dylan, uh, two of them with Dylan Johnson versus Washington. And I forget the um, 
gosh, I forget, number 25, I think, or whatever it is for Oklahoma. I forget his name. He broke off a big run on a, on a missed tackle by um, – by um, Norton as 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 well, so he needs to he needs to fit up his responsibility with more of his frame, less of an arm and a shoulder. But basically, three missed tackles over eighty nine snaps that I charted. That is one missed tackle every twenty nine point six seven snaps. So that's just terrible. That's very very bad, right? Um, if you look at some snaps for missed tackle numbers among the interior and defensive line from Texas. I wrote him down uh, last year from 2023. So Norton and uh, again, two game sample, but still 89 snaps is starting to be a decent sized sample. Um, 29.67 snaps per missed tackle. Last year, Tavondre Sweat went 207.5 snaps per missed tackle. Uh, Trill Carter went 100.5 per missed tackle. Vernon Broughton went 70.25. Jerry Bledsoe went 80 per every missed tackle. Byron Murphy went 123.3 per missed tackle. Alfred Collins went 61 per missed tackle. So even if you look at the guy who had the highest propensity for missing tackles on Texas interior defensive line last season, Alfred Collins, uh, it's still double the frequency for uh, Norton on a per snap basis over this sample size. So putting all these things together, the good stuff we saw versus UW, the bad stuff we saw versus Oklahoma, so he Norton plays nose tackle. If he comes to Texas, he's, he's going to play nose tackle. That's what he plays. Um, he's playing under the same defensive co co defensive coordinator. He's you know it's just like that's what he's going to play. And the fact is, he's coming in to challenge Vernon Broaden. Vernon Broaden, Alfred Collins isn't the you know um, he's he's not the perfect answer at the three technique, but he's a better option at three technique than Vernon Broaden is at nose. Right. So if we look at the can I pull up a, just a chart to show everybody? Can I can I share this? Do you care? Share no share screen buttons down there. Okay. Uh let me see. How do I do it? Share screen. So deep dig 2023. Share this thing. Uh add it on here. Let me let me let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so can you guys see that on the screen? So, th so this is the this is the snaps per production caused for every player at Texas starting back in 2015 who played at least 100 snaps. You see at the top, you got like Hassan Ridgeway uh, generates production once every 5.31 snaps. Tavondre Sweat from last year 5.44. By Byron Murphy actually is a freshman 5.78. Right. So as you look down, we have like this is going all the way back, you know, to 2015. We have 167 of these players through here. The very bottom, you got guys like Jalen Green and Ray Thornton, Kobe Boyce played 271 snaps to Kobe Boyce with no production. Ray Thornton, the worst production of anybody since 2015 or whatever. But you got to come up here, right? And you can see that whenever I did this exercise with Tio Ali'i Savea, he's up here at like number if, if you just take the 62 snaps I charted for him at Arizona last year and you juxtapose it with what people have done historically here at Texas, he would have been like 15th overall, right? Now, over the course of a season and versus the same competition Texas played, who knows? But it's uh, like it turned out I was saying, dude, this is no Trill Carter. He's going to come in and he's, he's going to be something, right? You have to really sort of scroll down here past a lot of these guys, right? I mean, we're scrolling down, right? We're now like out of 170 players. We're now at like 87, 90, right? We're getting down to where, you know, Alfred Collins is right here, right? 11.09 in 2023 as far as his snaps per production caused, right? We're still going down. We're going down, 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 down to where we finally get to Bill Norton right here. 13.69 snaps per production caused over the 89 snaps charted. Now, is that good? No, it's not good because it's, it's like it's down here kind of close to the bottom. If I put this at like 50% and just show you this like this, it's like Seve is up here. This is the top. Here's the, here's the bottom right here. Ed Norton's kind of edging his way down the bottom, right? Maybe the top, bottom, maybe not quite bottom quartile, but bottom third, right? But that is still ahead of Vernon Broughton at 14.6. So what I would say is this. Whenever we look at um, look at this situation and we say he's coming in to challenge Vernon Broughton, 
it if Savea came out looking really good in this thing, right? Norton didn't. But if we're comparing Norton to Broughton, he did come away more efficiently on a per-snap basis. And if you look at Cockamamie PFF and you compare, you know, what a, we can look at some wisdom of crowds with PFF and we can say to ourselves, okay, PFF had them both graded as run defenders with whatever their stupid grade is, is a 67, a 69.7. They were hilariously, they were tied as far as how they held up versus the run last year across all games. Uh, that was tied for 176 place among 545 college football qualifiers from 2023. So my final takeaway on this and my final thoughts about will Bill Norton improve the Texas defense if he does come uh, versus Oklahoma, if you took that game, he would be a slight downgrade to Vernon Broaden, right? If you looked at his game versus Washington, just watched it on his own, you would think to yourself that's a significant upgrade versus Vernon Broaden. On the whole, what the numbers show is that Norton is probably a slight upgrade to Broughton overall based on those two games, but not a program changer at the interior tier defensive line, right? Not even a shot in the arm like Savea was, a guy who can be maybe be more productive in spurts out there. This is a dude who has been out there a ton, um, a guy who can hold up, a guy who can eat some space but maybe not a guy who goes in there and can be a Tasmanian devil the same way that we saw Savea be at times whenever he was at Arizona. So the road for Norton, though, is easier going through Broughton than it is for Savea going through Collins. So the final answer is he would provide immediate viable depth at worst and could possibly start at best. So with that being said, he's a, he, he's a take. He's a take. But he doesn't. But he doesn't come in. He doesn't come in and change things. He doesn't come in and change things drastically. They need to keep. They they really do need to keep um, searching as far as into your defensive linemen and in the portal. There is there is one that Texas looks like they're going to be after now. We can we can talk about that in a minute. What I, what I've been what I've been searching most for is a place where I can get beef that I know is clean. Don't you want beef that you know is clean? No vaccinations, no inoculations, no 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 commingling of herds. Just every every week, man. Coming tomorrow, there's going to be a new load of beef processed 13 days ago, right? Hung for 13 days at a processing plant right there in Mason, Texas, right at Texas Beef Traders. TexasBeefTraders.com. Look, you guys, you can scan the QR code. Call Texas Beef Traders. Let them know. Let them know that Alex and Anwar sent you, man, the old-fashioned show, Orange Bloods Live sent you. You'll get 10% off everything, and you're going to pay less than you pay at HEB. You're going to pay like 4 bucks less for your New York strip steaks per pound, 5 bucks less for your ribeyes. You're going to get all kinds of steaks there, like Delmonico cuts, uh, the tomahawks, ev everything that you could ever imagine, and it tastes so good when it's local. You know it's good, it's local, it's clean, grass-fed, grass-finished, local, American. You're not getting American meat. You're not getting it. Go to Texas Beef Traders, texasbeeftraders.com. If you're not close to Lakeway, if you're not close to the heart of Lakeway, please just call up there. Talk to Darren. Talk to Shay. I would recommend going in there, just grabbing a beer, grabbing a glass of wine. They'll bring you out a charcuterie board. They'll do whatever, man. They just want to show you the meats. Once you try them, you'll never go back to anything else. I can promise you that. Go to texasbeeftraders.com or listen, just give them a call. Call up Darren. Call up Shay. If you can't make it out there, tell them what you want. Make your order. They'll just bring it to you. If you're in Austin area, the hell they do. They made a delivery out to Temple the other day for one of our listeners. TexasBeefTraders.com. On on war. All right, my bad. I had to un unmute myself, and so after obviously after we talk about Texas Beef Traders, we got to talk about Eric Sells Homes DFW because if you are looking at a home in the DFW area, that would be a great segue into the TCU uh, defensive tackle who who has a high interest in Texas. Um, if he's if he's thinking about it, it, hey, once he gets that NFL contract, where is he going to go? Eric Sells Homes DFW. Make sure you check him out, man, with the master plan. He's El Presidente himself, a friend of the show. Eric Sells Homes DFW. There it is. Well, that's one thing he certainly does is sell homes. He also shows up in the chat. 
five minute ad, says Rodolfo. Rodolfo, do you know what? That was not five minutes, but next time I'm going to make it five minutes just, just for you, brother. I'm going to, I'm going to go five minutes on, uh, on Texas beef traders. Right. So, Hey, do we have, do we have, um, do we have, do we have, uh, we have five minutes or so left in the show, right? We could do some buy or sell. Uh, yeah, we got more than five. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we got more than five. So, um, you, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go, uh, I, yeah. Let me go ahead. Let me find my buy or sells from the other day. Uh, here, here we go. Here's the, here's the first buy or sell I have for you. Buy or sell. The difference between Jatavian Sanders and Gunnar Helm is minimal. Buy or sell. Uh. Ah, it was just they're such different. No, I sell the sell. They're much different players, right? I mean, I always, I always, I always look at, um, I always look at this stuff through the lens of. I mean, are you looking at it through the end of like, all right, the end of the season when we look at number of catches, number of yards, number like, are we just looking at? The proofs in the pudding kind of thing? Are we looking I at mean, like, however you want? You, you can take it however you want to well, take I'm it. A, you have a body of work. I mean, I'm just talking about the, yeah, the but, person, right? But, uh, but like you're asking, like my immediate default, I'm a personnel guy. I'm a scouting guy. I'm, I'm an evaluation guy, right? And so whenever whenever I hear a question like this, I'm just like the difference between them. I look at the differences. I'm like, gosh, there's a million differences. I can't name <laughs> like Gunnar Helm is just a different kind of player. Are we talking about if they're different or whether they're going to have different impacts on the offense from a bottom line perspective? Just the, this, just the, is the difference? Is it minimal? Just is there much of a drop off between G- Jatavian Sanders and Gunnar Helm? Well, but they play different positions. Alex, it's it's uh, it's it, it's I'm not putting I'm you. Sorry, I'm not, I'm I'm sorry, not, it's man. not like a homicide investigation, Alex. It's just yeah. by yourself. This is why my wife, who's an my my wife, who's an autism specialist, always just gets so tilted with me. She's like, "Why can't?" <laughs> yeah, so, yeah uh, no, I, it, I, this is not the first forty-eight. It's just by herself. Um, if we're well, okay, okay, all right. So I'll buy, I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy that. I think that um, Gunnar Helm's going to have better stats this season, and maybe stats that end the season close to maybe what JT. Sanders had last year, right? Um, but I'm going to sell the fact that the difference is, is minimal, and I'm going to sell the fact that, um, and I don't think he'll have it. You know, I'm I'm going to I'm I'm going to sell it all, right? I I think I'm going to sell it all. I think that J T. Sanders, even though Gunnar Helm is more of an inline guy, better blocker, um, better traditional tight end. Maybe he's going to be able to help out with some of those split zone concepts we talked about yesterday, stuff like that in the run game. JT Sanders was miserable miserable at that last year. And I think we began to see a little bit why down the through the course of this pre-draft process, whenever he does eight reps on bench and he broad jumps nine foot six and he does a 30-inch vertical and he has the slow 40 and stuff. Like J- JT Sanders – we had always baked into his profile that he's this elite athlete that we thought he was coming out of high school. And he's a good on-field athlete at, you know, at times. I think last year he was a little bit banged up, but just really, really blew up a lot of plays that Texas fans blame the offensive line for. A lot of that was JT Sanders' fault as a blocker. So Gunnar Helm's going to help out in that regard, but he's not the seam stretcher. He's not the weapon that the defenses have to account for in the passing game, right? And that does a whole lot in a Steve Sarkeesian – RPO advantage throw type of type of offense where you got to kind of clear out some of those guys, right? Those um, those hook curl defenders, man. When you can get those guys cleared out with their three hole drops, it like it, it makes a big deal for with the open windows to where Quinn can see and throw these balls on his hot reads. So Gunnar Helm's not going to have that same. That's going to be what Amari Nyblack needs to be doing next year. So. Um, I think he's a better offensive weapon from a pure playmaking standpoint than than Helm. So I think Helm's going to – I'm going to sell the fact that the difference is minimal because I feel like they're very different players. But I do think Helm is going to bring things to the Texas offense last year that JT Sanders wasn't able to bring whenever he's more involved. 
and that there will be fall offs from JT Sanders in certain aspects of the game as far as the as far as the passing game. All right, sell for you. All right, what do you got for me? All right. Alex is buy or sell. Let's see. Where where are mine? Oh, mine are mine are above yours. Okay. This is a very unexpected thing to hear about AD Mitchell from this was actually from Bob McGinn on Tyler Dunn's uh uh blog, Go Long T D. Um this was let's see, I'm gonna pull it up right now. So what he said was A third, so he says he's got Garrett Wilson X catch, catch radius, athletic ability, body. This is coming from a scout, okay? Okay. On on Adnan Mitchell, he's got Garrett Wilson X catch radius, athletic ability, body control, but he's almost uncoachable. Uncoach, Before you even get to the diabetic part, he's kind of going to do it his way. He's a little bit of a wild horse. You've got to see if you can harness him in. Then once you do that, he doesn't. He doesn't address the diabetic stuff in a mature way. He's very much of a boom bust type of guy. He's been diagnosed as a type one diabetic. You're going to have to assign somebody to be next to him for his first, first few years because his issues were all about his diabetes and his blood sugar, said a second scout. When his blood sugar's off, he's rude, he's abrasive, he doesn't pay attention in meetings. It's why you get really, really, really SH, you know, character reports coming out of Georgia and Texas. But when his stuff is normal and they get him normal by lunchtime, he's out of practice, high energy, best practice player, loves football, et cetera. Is this not the most weird thing that like is 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 is, is this is a very unexpected thing to hear? Do you buy or sell? Well, it's 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 definitely I buy on the unexpected part. The thing that is interesting is the 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 details are so specific that it's it's not it's not random it's there, no, no one's saying oh he takes off a couple of times in, in practice he you know he doesn't go as hard or something like that's general like anyone can make that up someone went to something super specific they went to something to his diabetes which i didn't, was not aware of uh and then so because it's so specific uh, as far as the details are concerned they're getting this from somebody Right. Some somebody that that that's not that's not generic. So there's something to this. Um, so I buy that there's some there's somebody somebody told him some these this person something along the way that that's that's what's carrying with him. Um, so I you know, to, to severity, I never heard this at Texas. I never heard about him being problematic or any of these things that we're talking like that's come out. I haven't heard these things, but I have to buy that someone told them something that it, it's it's like me saying that that house across the street that that mailbox that's painted blue you know and that neighbor who drives a, a you know a Ford F one fifty with the dent on the side like there's so many specifics to it there's something to it I just don't know who said it uh, and what and what came about so there, but there there is something to that but is it unexpected I I read that I was like what. Well, it's unexpected. Sure, it's unexpected. I've, so, I've, so you buy that it's unexpected. I was just like, well, yeah, I buy it unexpected. Like, I, I also, but I, I buy that it's unexpected. But I also buy that the, it's so specific that there has to be some sort of truth somewhere in there. There's a truth in it. I don't know if there's someone went to extremes, but somewhere in there, I didn't know he had diabetes. So for someone to have that. Someone told him some pretty, you know, inside information. I kind of figured he might be like it's, it's, it's obviously nothing. It, like it's 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 none of our business. But I felt like he's been kind of didn't he do some kind of nil thing where it's like talk to some like childhood diabetes thing or something. I kind of remember something like that. But um, the so I feel like that's kind of been a little a, percolating a little bit out there and stuff. It's more just this character concern. I've never heard about ad being a character concern. No. No, I haven't, no, I haven't heard that portion of it. So that's what I'm saying. There, there may be some things that are exaggerated as far as that. I just don't know. They, but they had to have someone relay this information to him. I just don't know where it came from. Yeah, and that, you, and that Bob McGinn article every year comes out with some stuff that you're just like, gosh, you know, have you seen the stuff about Jermaine Burton from Alabama? No. He's talking about they're saying that <laughs> they're saying that like a few, like there are two or three teams that just have him off the board for his off field stuff. And I was looking into it. There was the incident in the um, in the Tennessee game where he kind of put his. Uh, I, I won't 
you know, Saban said it was a mistake and he was scared. He didn't look scared to me, but that involved a female that was uh, female that was um, running onto the field after the game that he had a, some kind of altercation with. Anyway, right. um, let me give you one of my buy or sells here. Buy or sell. Steve Sarkeesian has not lost sleep over one Longhorn player who has entered the transfer portal. Um. So who's? Let's just go over who's in for those who might have missed it all. So it's is it still four? It's I'm talking yeah, and I'm yeah, I'm, I'm even talking overall as well. I'm, I'm I'm talking about over the last couple of years, including this year. Oh, one single transfer. Mm hmm. Well, not this year. Sure. Not th these four: Samaj Burel, Billy Walton, um, Peyton Kirkland, and was there another one? Who's the other one? Uh, Samaj Burel, Kirkland, uh, Billy Walton, Walton, and Tap. Tap. Yeah. Tap is um, the one. I'll give you last. I'll give you last year's uh, guys. Thank you. Uh, 2023. Uh, Jaden Alexis, Brennan Thompson, Derek Brown, Travell Johnson, Ishmael Ibrahim, Ben Ballard, Ovia Gofu, Ajay Hall, Logan Parr, Junior Angelau, uh, Isaac Pearson, Troy O'Meary, Prince Dorba, Jameer Johnson, Andre Carrick, uh, DJ ha Harris, Hudson Carr, Devin Richardson, JD Coffey, and Jalen Garf. I mean, you know, I, I would I would just say that for Angelau's, um his uh, his connection to the program and that, like that might have been something that would have been a little bit hard to deal with. But I think in the end, that was something that was kind of mutually agreed upon. So I don't think he lost sleep over it. Brennan Thompson, of course. I don't think he would. I don't think he lost. He, he never played Brennan Thompson, but Brennan Thompson has flashed since he's gotten to Oklahoma watching back that Oklahoma game. I didn't know it was Brennan Thompson versus Arizona in the in the bowl game caught a nice long touchdown from Jackson Arnold, but I don't I, I don't I don't think he's lost any sleep over any of those guys. It's and then the only ones I give you from the highlights from the previous year, uh, Marcus Washington. I'll just give you the best guys: Marcus Washington, Jared Wiley, Casey Thompson, uh, B.J. Foster. Uh, I don't think wow, Joshua Moore never landed anywhere. Um that's those are probably the best the best guys I would well. Remember. I mean, in retro, in hindsight, he would have probably loved to have kept Jared Wiley. You imagine Jared Wiley and JT last year. You're talking about probably you know, two guys taken in the top five tight ends of this draft class. You think about this draft class at tight end, you got Brock Bowers, and then there's a group of like JT Sanders, Jaheim Bell. Uh, ben Sennett, Theo Johnson, Jared Wiley's right there in that kind of group of dudes. So I think look, out of all those, dude, out of all those guys, the biggest, I mean, the biggest fish that got lost was Jared Wiley. I think at the time, though, he probably didn't mind. I, I don't yeah. think he lost in, oh, any any sleep over it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's using my overall take. All right, what do you got? Okay, let me see. Um, let's do another one from uh, this one. Buy or sell. Texas will still play the spring game in heavy rain so long as there's no lightning or thunder. Hmm. I'll sell. I'll sell on that one. My my gut, and I don't have anything official, so this is just my gut. My gut says they're going to view that as a practice. And because they're going to view it as a practice, what normally happens when you have a practice and it's rain, they go inside the bubble. And I think at the end of the day, if they have to go inside the bubble, that will be more important for them to get that final practice done than it would be to try to put on a show for the fans. Like So because it's a free show, uh, because there's nothing involved or anything like that, and you know, not risking injuries, I think they would just, I think they would just cancel it, go inside the bubble, um, and tell everybody we'll see you back, you know, in the fall, maybe try to open a practice then. Yeah. Well, okay. But what about, okay. So heavy rain is canceled. What about just, they don't do no, they don't do practices in heavy rain out outdoors anyway. 
Well, it's just, I mean, but it's not, it's not, a, it's, it's not any practice. It's a, well, it's the 15th practice, right? It's the, la- it's the very last practice. You don't have 30,000 fans and Reckless Kelly opening it and Bevo Boulevard and all the vendors. And uh, it's, it's a little bit of a different practice, right? I mean, it's I mean, kind of, yeah, come on. I mean, yeah, but it's not, it's also an exhibition. You know, I think, I, I, I think what will be more important in Steve Sarkeesian's mind will be, I want to have an effective practice. I think that'll be more important to him than saying, I want to put on a show for the, in, in the rain for, by the way, if it starts heavy raining, there won't be 30,000 fans out there. There's, that, that number will definitely, you know, diminish. I think at that point, they'll just say, we're going to go inside the bubble guys, you know, that you, and I think that will be, I think that'll take precedent. Do you think yeah. it's going to get canceled? If it's heavy rain, I, no, I, I, no, I don't think no, it'll be just, canceled. Gut, I think it'll just you, go inside. Your gut feeling right now? My gut, my gut says Steve will go inside. It means that means no spring game deep dig for me. <laughs> well, you have an easy weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, but it's, but gosh, I mean, even though I got to do the deep dig, man, but like that spring game, man, it's a real, it's a re- some really valuable insights, man, through the rest of summer for us to look back on and kind of talk about and stuff. I, I I I hope the game goes on for for my sake, for for everyone's sake. Um, All right, I got one for you. Here we go. Uh, music question, off topic. Arrow Smith's Peace Out 40 City Farewell Tour will have at least three cancellations or postponements. Buy or sell. 40 cities. When does it start? Mm, sometime this year. Because they're it, actually going to be at the Moody. Does it go through the fall? Does it go through cold season? Uh, yes. Hold on. I'll give you the uh, – the the. let's see. I'll tell you when it starts. Yes, it will start. It starts in North America on September 2024 and lasts up to uh, February 2025. Well, so to, there's good. That's a definite buy because uh, so I'm looking up Steven. So Steven Tyler now is age 76. I'm guessing Joe Perry's probably around that same age. And you know the, those old rockers are real. Those old rockers. I mean, whether or not this, they're they're scared of COVID. So probably if they catch it, they're gonna they're not gonna play. Um, the other thing is Steven Tyler also his, he's, he's always been a guy like kind of like Axel Rose. He's always been a guy who, um, has, uh, throat stuff come up with it, you know, where he has to cancel shows. Right. He's like, um, uh, like a, like a modern, um, like a modern country version of this is like Morgan Wallen. It's like, he's always having to cancel stuff because he gets something with his, some, some of these guys have really particular, really particular uh if they're if they're not right on they're gonna cancel shows if they can't sing steven tyler is one of those guys so i would say that yes since it's gonna be a cold season um since it could be stuff where he's traveling he we could catch you know little ailments that could affect his throat also they'd probably not want to do it if there's covid going around the you know going around the band i would mm-hmm. say that yeah there would you say there will be what I, I said at I, least three. Right, I said so, at least yeah. three. Yeah. Out, 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 out of a forty city, probably yeah. more like four, four, four or five. I, I, I would guess. Damn, living on the edge. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, okay, so here's here here's here's one. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to do a screen share. Okay, if you were on the beach in Florida, you would jump in and help with this if asked, and you grew up in Florida. Yeah. Beach in Florida and someone that jump into the beach. Can you see this? Already I can say I can tell you the answer. Oh my Hey, that's too dangerous. Don't be doing that. What are they doing? They're trying to the shark has been beached and they're trying to help it back in the water. Oh hell no. Shark this is, this is it. This is it for you. It's, it, your 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 life is over, man. No. Like this is these are these you want the you fuck. you want to go help the shark? Hell no, dude. dude he look he, he can't breathe. The, oh man, like hey man, hello darkness, my <laughs> old friend. Like dude, you made bad decisions, man. You had all that water out there, and you decided you want to come close. <laughs> gonna, nah, you're you done. Get back in. 
It's they, life, man. They gotta, it's he's having to pull him backwards right now to get the water going kind of back through his gills. Do you notice you see no black people out there trying to help? <laughs> I, I would I mean, be I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay. Let, let 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 you you do you see you see no black people out there saying to themselves, you know what? I I'll, I'll 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 see Jermaine out there. I'll see Tyrone. Like, I'll see none of them saying, "Oh, we got help." Hell no. That shark is done. The best thing that can happen to that shark is he's gonna be on somebody's plate by the by the end of the day. But hell no. Now, do you know? Do you know what the fact? Do you know what the fact is? I would be fired up and absolutely love to go in there and jump in and help. I would like you'd have to hold me back. My wife would have to say, "No, no, no, you can't do it." <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> My natural inclination would be to go out there. And, yeah, it'd be cool. Like I've like just being able to touch a shark that that big. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to just touch it, feel it. No, I don't want to touch that shark. What the hell for? To do what? To touch it? No. Well, now, listen. A, if you talk about listen, magnificent animals. Okay, listen. If you if you driving your car, and let's say I I I, I see somebody your car got stalled, and I see somebody trying to help you push it off the side of the road. I don't mind getting out, and I'll help you. You know, help that person get this car on the side of the road. We've all had a a car that's kind of stalled on us or something like that. I don't mind helping. You know, if I'm on a plane. And there's a, like an older woman who wants to try to get her bag up, and it's a little bit heavy for her. <laughs> I got long arm. I'll help that person. You know that that's humanity, right? But a little damn shark. It's not a little one. It's kind of big. The big ass. Okay, <laughs> big ass shark. Yeah. I don't even talk a baby shark. I talk about big ass shark. Nah, you dead. You dead on my watch. I'm not. I won't take a picture. Be disrespectful. But you dead on my watch. You should not have. Hey, sorry. Life happens, and so does death. <laughs> and you're a part of it. <laughs> okay. All right. Buy or sell, Alex. Arch Manning will score at least two touchdowns during the spring game. And I say score. That could be by running or by passing. Uh, well, I think that he's going to be going up against the ones on defense for a lot of this. So I think it's going to be harder, right, especially behind that second offensive line. But I think he does it. I think he gets two. I think he runs one in, and he and he and he throws one in. And I think there'll be one of these that'll be like a there'll be one that's like a big, a big, um, you know, one of these big ones that fans can get excited about. I th I think that you're maybe a big long run. It feels like there's gonna be something with. Doesn't it just feel like there's gonna be something with Arch? Yes. You know, I mean, I I don't have any good analysis for it. I can't say you know. I can't say that. You know, it's been this many throws. He's due for it. Anything like that. It's just, it's just a feel thing. It feels like something's coming from Arch, right? It's like, yeah, it's kind of going to be the thing. So, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna buy that one. Okay, right. uh, let's see. Um, how about this one? Buy or sell? Trey Wisner will have more carries than Gunnar Helm will have receptions in 2024. I'll sell on that one. I like it though. It's a good, it's a good. Wait, wait, wait. Well, well. Let me hold on before I sell too hard. How many did Jatavian Look, finish with? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say. You want me to hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what was, what was? How many did he finish with though? Not, I don't know exactly off the top of my head. That actually, ooh, he so he finished with forty five receptions. And then look at how many how many carries like Keelan Robinson and Savion and stuff had last year. Mm, yeah, you know what though, considering. The first three games for Texas won't necessarily be uh, – three out of four games won't be against uh, the toughest teams. If I go – I'm actually may sell on that one because let me go back to their schedule. So Texas has Colorado State, should be a blowout, UTSA, and La Monroe. I can see him compiling some numbers there. I can rack up 30 carries right there and then just add, dink on yeah. some stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, trying to help he, you he, could have, he could have six to seven each game easily. Uh, and then I think, you know, inevitably running backs get banged up. And because a running back gets banged up. So I, I will actually buy on this one. I'll buy on this one. I'll buy on this one that he actually will. Because I can definitely see him with the with that schedule, especially the towards the end, by the way. Because towards the end of that schedule, by the way, the majority of these teams are at like Florida, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Texas A&M. They actually have the worst odds 
of winning the SEC going into this season. So realistically, yeah, I, 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 I'll buy on that. I can absolutely uh, see it. Um, good question, though. All right. Um, I've got a couple of others. All right, I got, I got, I got one for you. Buy or sell? Jaden Blue and Matthew Golden are step brothers. Is that a? Are they? Is this literal? Yeah, literal. <laughs> I don't know. It's such an odd thing to say that I'll buy it. <laughs> I knew you would buy it. That's why, because it was odd. They are sell. They are actually cousins. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, okay. They, I don't are, know. They, they, they are actually, they are actually cousins. Like They're, actual cousins? Because I know yeah, people talk blood, about by cousins. Blood, you know, by blood. And actually, if you look at Alex at the roster, if you go, if you look at the roster, it actually both went to the same high school. Huh. Cousins. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I, le I learned that between uh, the other day when I was talking to Jane and Blue, uh, but he mentioned that they are, someone asked him about his relationship with him. And he mentioned that they actually are, are are cousins. And then when, like I said, if you actually go, uh, you'll see Jaden Blue, Houston, Texas, uh, Klein Kane. And then if you go to uh, Matthew Golden, you'll notice what Houston, Texas, Klein Kane, Klein Kane. All right, yeah, there, there you go, you cousins. Here's one that's a little bit off the beaten path that I couldn't believe this stat yesterday, but it's the average. Buy or sell. Men should replace all underwear in their wardrobe once every six to twelve months. Oh, wait, it's not on the screen, Alex. By the way, uh, it isn't because it's, no. it's it's showing on my screen. Okay, maybe it's showing your on your. Uh ooh, six to twelve months. Yeah. Sell. Yeah, I think it's a if sell. You, if, if you listen. So underwear is expensive these days if you buy good pairs. Like some of these I buy are 35 bucks a pair, man. Forget that. If you if you are at the point where your drawers have to be replaced every six to 12 months, you need to go see a doctor. Okay? <laughs> you either need to you need to see a doctor and we need to talk about your wiping uh or lack thereof right but first of all not only should you be wiping you should probably you probably should be using baby wipes as it is like so you should be taking it the next step uh but nonetheless even if you aren't using uh baby wipes uh, you probably should get a bidet and that would probably help you ever have one of those by the way I have I have one on every single toilet in the whole house on one. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. different experience just a different yeah. it's a it is your butt has never been cleaner yeah. unless you've had one of those things. Like you, you, you have that, and then you go back to normal. Then you realize, like, oh my god, I have no clue why I don't have that. It tickles a little bit, but, uh, but I, <laughs> all right, let's not talk about it. <laughs> I was, I, I was just gonna let you cook. Ah, I was just gonna let you all cook. right, let's go buy or sell. <laughs> buy or sell. Uh, this uh, Alex. There is a future NFL linebacker on this roster, not named. Anthony Hill Jr. Cotton is saying in Cotton is saying in um, the chat that no man should be buying thirty five dollar pair of underwear. And I'll just tell you guys, man, you need to go. Like this is not a this is not a advertisement. They're obviously not paying me anything, but man, you need to look into the Mac Weldon, Aaron It X, dude. They're just they're just game changers. Just I it makes me sick to think about throwing these things away after after one year. That's why I thought it was weird when I saw that stat. Um, anyway, a future NFL linebacker on this roster, not named Anthony Hill Jr. Let me make sure I'm not like forgetting anybody. Um, I, off the top of my head, I kind of think no, but no, I mean, I do look, man. I think that Blackwell maybe eventually could be one. I have high hopes for Darian Gallette. Yes. I think if, I think one of those guys will play in the NFL, are they going to be like the guys that are go through the combine and you know, all the rest of this stuff? No, but there will be a player between Leonga LaFowle, Maurice Blackwell, Darian Gallette, Kendrick Blackshire, maybe. I mean, even Ty Anthony Smith is on the roster. We don't know what's going to happen with him. One of those guys will you know, collect some kind of NFL paycheck. Gotcha. All right, you want to uh, you want to do one last one? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you want one about NBA or do you want one about Taco Bell? 
talk about it. I, I, I'm barely – I'm watching the NBA now only because it's the playoffs. I don't watch it a ton during the regular would, season. Would five and a half be a good over-under for you as far as the number of game, total games that you're watching the NBA playoffs? That was going to be my question. Oh. I'll take the over on that one. Because I've already, I've already watched. I watched the Chicago game last night. I watched the Lakers game the previous night. So, oh, so you're watch, already on your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already. I'll, I'll watch more because it's the playoffs. It'll be more. And it, the thing is, Alex, you could do two in one night pretty easily. Mm. You know, the, the early game and the late game. So because of that, I'll, I'll, I'll do all my catch up. All right, here we go. Taco Bell is a better option for fast food than McDonald's. I would so I would sell on that one, and there, here's the reason why: it's not for quality, but it's more about the convenience. So if you, it's just the convenience of I'm on the interstate and I've got kids in the back and they're hungry and I just I need something. The the McDonald's convenience is just way easier than the Taco Bell uh, stuff. Now. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really, I'm not a huge Taco Bell fan. And I'll be honest with you, once you move to Texas and you actually can have some really good like tacos, especially out of food trucks, it's such a step down to go to Taco Bell. Like you, you're just like, why why am I here? Like where where I literally have all these food places that I can go to. I mean, even if you want something that's a chain, you can Torchies is better than that. No, or yeah. Taco Deli, of course, is better than that. And I think Taco Belly is better than Torchies, right? But, you know, and then there's so many other places that you can choose from. Nah, nah. I, McDonald's just, is just for the convenience. Do you know, do you know that my daughter didn't, didn't, didn't have McDonald's until she was over seven years old? I actually held I'm her up. Surprised you ever long. let your daughter have a McDonald's. Quite no, I didn't let her have it. it. It was her aunt when she went to visit her in Dallas. I was, I was tilted out of my mind. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, let's uh, get, out of, let's yeah. get out of here. I got some player interviews that I got to do today. All so right. uh, you guys enjoy yourself. Enjoy your day. I believe the podcast should be later. Uh, you guys remember what I say. Leave your day is like it's your last because one day it will be. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here in the chat, hanging out with us today. Great show, man. Uh, if you guys could please, there's close to there's been close to 500 of you guys in the chat if you guys could please remember to like the show subscribe to the channel we certainly would appreciate that so thanks so much to our sponsor specs uh for providing the specs chat line thanks to texas beef traders make sure and go check them out and of course eric sells homes dfw um we couldn't be able to do it without them we couldn't be able to do it without all you guys in the chat so we love you guys we hope that you'll have a great day go out today go do something big